Praise the Lord. What we call on that name tonight in prayer, amen, taking our needs to the Lord. Let's remember all that are out this evening, pray for them, asking the Lord to strengthen them. I'd like for us to continue to keep Linda lifted up to the Lord in prayer, yes. along with a host of others that whose names have been called aloud before our hearing. In the, well, in the last few services, uh, all that are cancer victims, let's pray for them. Let's pray for this country, this nation, its leadership. Let's pray for the world as a whole, missionaries, home and foreign missions alike. Let's pray for brother and sister Long. I know their passion is to be back in, in Africa, amen, where they're supposed to be ministering. And we want to pray, asking the Lord to touch them and strengthen them as well as the people of Africa, amen. Sister Tina, Melinda, the young lady that Sister Tina has been witnessing to here of late. Her son passed away here just a few days ago. Let's remember them in prayer. Sister Connie, Sister Forsyth, let's remember Mercy. Let's remember all of our elders, amen, during this time. Anyone else? Sister uh, Clara. Pray for all the nurses. Sister Hadassah. Pray that we get this baby, amen. Remington. For the building fund, amen. Brother Seth? Yes, let's remember and c to keep Beverly Knight lifted up in prayer. Amen. Brother James? Okay. All right, let's remember Brother Wright and his health situation. Mama? Lost family members. How many of you have lost family Lost friends, amen. Let's remember them in prayer. Brother James. All right, Sister Sherry, okay. But we do want to pray for both of them and their health, amen. Sister. Uh, thank you, Mom and Dad. We'll be traveling back on Friday. Let's pray that there's good weather. For All them. right, let's pray for Brother and Sister McCarty, who will be traveling back to Tennessee this coming Friday. Pray for good weather. Man, we've been having some weather here of late, have we not? Brother David. Yes, thank you. I, I text everyone earlier. Brother Jerry has asked that we continue to keep his grandmother lifted in prayer. Uh, I think she went in and had to go back in to surgery, if I'm not mistaken. Let's ask that the Lord be merciful, amen, and bring what unity and what ties are needed to be brought together in regard to that family as a whole. Sister Caitlin. All right, well, let's continue to pray. It's not broken completely, but fractured. All right, let's pray for this service tonight. Let's pray for one another. How many of you see yourself as a person in need of prayer? Amen. I'm always in need of prayer. I'd like for us to pray for the backslider this evening. Amen. Let's pray, shall we? Gracious God, we come to you. And we come calling upon that name as the song said, knowing that something moves when we come calling upon that name in faith believing. Believing, Lord, for healing. Believing, your Lord, for deliverance. Believing, your Lord, amen, to touch and minister to the hearts and the lives of loved ones, of friends, and even as many as should label themselves our enemies. Amen. I trust, Lord, God, that... Many will feel the effects of a fervent prayer as it be offered up in their stead. Lord, praying, praying aloud together. Amen. Agreeing upon these things as a church family and body. Trusting you to do beyond that of which we ask. Beyond that of which we can imagine. Pray for Brother Charlie, Sister Sherry. Pray, Lord, for Brother Jack. Amen. And ask, Lord, that you will keep he and sister, amen, on their way back home Friday. And that you will give them good traveling grace, amen, in the process. God, we pray, Lord Jesus, for this country. Pray for this nation, for the world as a whole. Pray, Lord Jesus, for our leadership. 
asking, Lord, that you will, amen, do that for which none other can do, convincing, persuading minds and hearts into believing, Lord, and into believing the way you desire to be believed upon, amen. God, I'm trusting you, Lord Jesus, to minister to Beverly Knight. Pray, loving God, amen, on the behalf of all that have drifted and gone astray and that are drifting about aimlessly in life. I pray for little Ronnie, for his healing and healing in his body in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for Mama Forsyth, God, that you would do, amen, with her as well as with all of our elders, amen, that are in need of physical strength, granting and giving only as you can in this day and hour. Amen. In the name of Jesus. God, I give you praise for it. I give you glory for it. Lord, and all that were unable to be here this evening, wherever they be, whatever they may be doing, I trust, Lord, that you will strengthen them in the power of your might. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And everyone say, in Jesus' name, in the name of the Lord. Look to your neighbor, smile, and say, it's a joy to see you here this evening. Now, there's quite a change here this evening in comparison to Sunday morning. Amen. I believe that there's enough uh, social distancing here this evening. Amen. We need not live in fear of whether we are distant enough or not. God bless you as you're seated. I'd like for us to prepare to give an offering here in just a few moments, but by way of via announcement, uh, this coming Sunday is the fifth Sunday. We will have dinner on the ground as we call it though we'll be eating from off the table. But uh, we want to ask all and everyone to bring a dish of some sort and uh, prepare to bring a, a meal or a dish of your liking. And we're going to believe the Lord, amen, to keep us during our time of gathering. How many of you believe that gathering is important? Amen. I believe that our gathering and assembling is imperative. It did me well to hear our president this past week say what he did mm -hmm. in considering our churches and our places of faith gathering and worship, amen, as places mm -hmm. essential, yes. essential, yes. amen. Yes. It is essential. Yes. It, is, it is of necessity, amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord in, in, in song as this fine group leads us in congregational singing.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> mm. My, my, my Jesus, I love you, Lord. You are worthy. <laughs> You're deserving, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your tender mercies. Thank you, Lord, for that power and love that has been shed abroad within our hearts and lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are certain ones in regard to leadership that is found and found given reverence, it's, that are found given respect to. And we find where that even the word of the Lord declares that uh, there are some of which are deserving of honor and some of double honor. But to God be all glory. To God be all honor. To God be all power. Amen. And everyone say forever. 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 He is deserving of all honor, power, and glory forever and ever. I'm going to say thank you for giving in the offering here this evening. I want to say again also what an honor it is to have Brother and Sister Long in service with us. I'm going to ask that Brother Long leave a brief, amen, testimony or message. Brother Long, if you will, amen, testify. You want to come up here and testify? He can't be heard back there, so we're going to allow him to. It's just an honor to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To be able, able to worship with one another. Amen. You know, sometimes you're just lifting up your hands and you'd see, look around and you see people that are in the spirit. Amen. And. And it just touches you. And so I'm thankful for what I feel here right now. Yes. Uh, the few weeks with grandchildren, things that we'll, we have not been able to do, we've been doing. And it's uh, just really nice. Uh, got to be with uh, Brother Powell today and uh, just different ones. And, and it's just an honor. I'm thanking God for the presence of God I feel here. Amen. But how are we going to get? what we feel here to the ones that are watching. Amen. Now, they might feel the presence of God, but there's something special about being around God's people. And so I encourage anybody, if they're still videoing, um, or uh, uh, those that know the people that have been watching, if we can just somehow contact them. Maybe just a talk, maybe just an invitation, maybe just a, a meal at your home. Amen. But I think that will touch their lives. We don't want to let anything go to waste of what God is doing in this hour. Amen. So house to house is what we need to do in lifting up God and seeing the kingdom of God grow. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. I appreciate Brother Hargrave. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Appreciate Brother Long, Sister Long. Amen. Well, we're going to allow that birthday girl to stand up and say a word here this evening. A year older. Hey, Amen. Brother Long, you better play it safe, I can assure you. Hey, Amen. She is a year older. And little did I know she's a year older than I am. I was not aware of that. So, uh, Sister Long, stand up and just leave a word of testimony here tonight. I am blessed beyond. Yes. And to be able to be here and feel the presence of the Lord. Every time I come, this is my home right here. Praise the Lord. Presence of the Lord I feel here. <laughs> it's something very special to me. Praise God. <laughs> it may sound silly to say. But I'm so thankful for whom my daughter married and the family my daughter married into. Because now I get to join in too. <laughs> Amen. But I'm thankful 
for his love and his mercy, his grace, his provisions. He has never failed me. Praise the Lord. And I give him praise. Amen, amen. He's never failed. Someone shout with me. He's never failed. And he will never fail. Amen. I believe we have one more song to be sung. Let's worship with them as they lift their voice in song, shall we? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. when he touches his touch can bring healing Jesus when he touches it is his touch that can bring deliverance it is his touch that's capable of mending the broken heart it is his touch that is well capable of taking that broken life and putting the broken pieces back together again like that of none other amen Jesus is still the miracle worker. And there are miracles that are just awaiting in the horizon. 
I believe that from the depths of my heart. I had no, really, no idea as to what Brother Long would say here tonight, but it fell well in line with what I feel inclined to teach or expound upon. Also, Sister Long having made reference to his presence, I know that we focus a great deal on his presence. And the reason being is because in his presence, the word of God declares that conviction comes. In his presence, there is a fullness and a fullness of joy that is encountered and experienced. Within the presence of the Lord, we find ourselves in need of more. Not more of this world, but in need of more of him. More of that peace of mind that passeth all understanding. We see to her that his presence will bring and bring to us what none other can. Hallelujah. You know, we can enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. And praise is essential. And especially in and among them that should so much as label themselves true worshipers of God, they will praise him, creating an atmosphere for which brings his presence to them. I preached here just a couple of weeks back concerning that of the Ark of the Covenant, and David asked the question, how can I get the Ark back to me? The Ark thus signifying his presence or representing the presence of God. I'm going to make reference to the gathering. I'm going to make reference to the tabernacle and the temple here tonight. I believe that it is imperative that all and everyone that does listen in on our, our live stream realizes that there is a need to gather you know, we can feel the presence of the Lord in the confines of our home. But there are things for which bring strength to one whenever you gather or face, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. There are things for which we witness that we would not witness otherwise. What you see and hear on the screen is very limited but what a pastor sees and witnesses taking place within certain lives while in the church house proves to be most effective not only to the pastor but to the saint and to oftentimes that one who may only sporadically come to church or to a church service creating if you will a desire and a hunger, if you will, for more of God or to put them in a place of, of passionate desire to be in his presence and be in his presence with others. I'm going to take your attention to the word of the Lord reading from out of the book of Psalms. And we'll read from Psalms chapter 122 and verse 1, a very familiar passage of Scripture. And then we'll read a few verses afterwards and then reflect back upon verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Verse 2, our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up. Notice the plurality. The tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel. The testimony being none other than the law of God or his word. The testament. Everyone say with me the test Testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord 
For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. And then going back to verse 1 again, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Reading from the Psalm of David again from chapter 27, we'll begin with verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall I what? Fear. The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, and we'll say the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. How often? Forever. Forever that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. It will say tabernacle. Shall he hide me? He shall set me upon a rock. Now shall mine head be lifted up upon mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. Reading now from out of the 23rd Psalm. A Psalm for which many of us are well capable of quoting. Because we learned it young while we were yet Sunday school children. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head, and with oil my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So to translate the Hebrew dwell is to follow and to follow a translation of this text. This meaning I will return to the house of the Lord, which looks forward to the return of the Messiah, which looks forward to the return of the anointed one, which looks forward to the temple. David was one who not only asked frequently to bask himself within the presence of the Almighty, but we find to where that his quest, his search for God was one of significant diligence to the level of which I believe for that cause, along with a host of other reasons, David would be labeled a man after God's own heart, after God's own heart. Amen. I don't want to be one labeled anything different other than as an individual after God's own heart. He desired to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I desire to have his presence around me. Yes. God bless you as you're seated. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm going to establish or set an outline here before you this evening. I want for us to understand that when it comes to the word of the Lord, that there are many times for which the, the term tabernacle, the 
the term temple or a place of gathering was used. And so we see to where that Jehovah or the tent of Jehovah was a movable sanctuary for which Moses was directed to erect in the wilderness. A movable sanctuary. Thus, I believe, implying or suggesting this one thing, that regardless of where we find ourselves in our spiritual sojourn or journey, amen, the presence of the Lord can and will be found. Amen. To he that hungers for, his presence can be found. We see to where that this particular tabernacle, its plans, its materials, and the furnishings are described within the book of Exodus, it could be readily taken down and set up and accompanied the Israelites during their wanderings. You know, it's amazing at how that even when we wander from or stray from the Lord, the presence of the Lord invariably at times will deal with you and I in a manner for which that we cannot help but be cognizant of the fact that he is near. Yeah. He is present. Hallelujah. So during the conquest, we see to where that this particular tabernacle was stationed at Gilgal. The conquest is, it was set up after it in Shiloh then where it re, uh, remained during the time of the judges and where the ark was captured by the Philistines. As the light did go out within the temple, as Eli and his sons would give and yield themselves over to this careless and frivolous attitude and display of action toward the things of God. They became extremely indifferent. In fact, his sons committed whoredom right at the threshold of the tabernacle. And God's judgment was withheld or withdrawn for a long period of time. And then we see to where that the Ark of the Covenant is removed from the tabernacle and taken by that of the enemy, the Philistines. And as a result, we see to where that one birth to one of these sons would be named Ichabod, thus meaning the glory of God hath departed from its house or its place. Amen. So there's one thing for certain. The soul that longs to be exposed to God's glory will not be deprived of such. I have been told by many before that they would come to be our guest at church here. And then after having given some considerate thought, obviously they would come to me later saying, I am in fear of offending one or offending someone either due to how they looked or how they appeared to be or maybe because they weren't quite what they thought that we should expect them to be. I want to clarify something here tonight. I want for not only you as a church family to understand and comprehend this, but there's never one of us here tonight that would be here without God's grace. There's never one of us here this evening that, that have made it home yet and as I preached the other day we are still reaching forth and we are still attempting to attain that goal and to achieve that for which God desires to have achieved within our lives there are vices for which people are in dire need of being delivered from you know, for me to preach and preach anything besides that which brings conviction at times to the hearts and the lives, not only of the sinner, of, of that one who doesn't come to church, but of them that 
oftentimes come to church, I would be doing you a great deal of injustice. I would be doing myself a great deal of injustice. For one, I am a person that has not made it yet. I still war against this flesh. I myself have personal vices for which I'm having to overcome every day of my life. Just as well as many of you have vices for which you are attempting to overcome within your life. Amen. If it were not for God's grace, we would not hear the preached word. If it were not for God's grace, you and I would not have the opportunities of which are granted us from time to time to be able to feel the power of God's spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. When I come to church, amen, I can't help but see and see blood-bought people. When I see and look into the face of a brother, David Bosworth, I see a man who was in the process of being indicted and in the process of being placed behind bars, but God. Hallelujah. When I look into the face of a brother Long, a man who not only took drugs and was heavily, a man addicted to such, but sold drugs as well. Amen. I see not his past, but I see a blood covering. Hallelujah. When I look into the faces of a number of others whose lives have been tattered, amen, in time past, I don't see the tattered ruins of yesterday. I see nothing more or less than that of a blood covering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost. And so that's why it does me a great deal of joy and does me pleasure every time I come to the church house and I assemble um, myself among others who are found to be of like precious faith. Amen. Who believe that the blood still covers, who believes that the Spirit still convicts, who believes, amen, that God's Spirit is still capable of delivering one from their past, hallelujah, who still believes, amen, that God is able to mend the brokenhearted, that God is able to mend broken homes, that God is capable, amen, of doing above and beyond that of which we can possibly imagine or even think according to the power that works and resides within us to God be the glory amen that's why I want to adjoin myself with others who are found to be amen of like precious faith whose faith is found to be within none other than that of the deliverer named Jesus Christ hallelujah let's give to God a round of applause amen hallelujah hallelujah Amen. So, I would do all and everyone who may express to me a desire to come to church a great deal of injustice. I would shortchange them. I would deprive them of knowing that as we have been blessed, they too can be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I've never been bound to alcohol. But thank God I'm not bound to alcoholism. Amen. I've never been bound to drug addiction or an addiction of such. But thank God I'm not addicted to drugs. There are things for which I have battled in my youth. Amen. For many battle youthful lusts. But thank God, amen, I've been an overcomer. <laughs> amen. And I'm still overcoming. Thank God, amen, that there are spiritual conquests and that there are a great number of hurdles for which that we can jump over. And it's all due to the divine assistance for which he gives to us. He said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Honey, he won't deprive me, nor would he cut me short of that of which he has promised to give. 
He has promised to provide with the temptation a way of escape so that I am capable of bearing all that comes my way. Amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. That's why we need each other's company. Brother James, when I see a Holy Ghost smile on your face, it lets me to know, amen, that the things of which you have overcome, if I'm struggling with them, I too can overcome them. Right. 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 Hallelujah. We all have our personal struggles in life. We all have our, we all have our shortcomings. We all fail from time to time. But when I see and witness the power of God moving upon one and they're doing a little Holy Ghost jig, amen, I become ecstatic due to the fact that I know that the enemy has not succeeded. Oh, no, he hasn't. Amen. And that God greater is God within him than he that is within the world. And the hope of which I see they have is a hope for which can very well be instilled in placed within me there's a great deal of joy and pleasure in witnessing the power of God at work in other people's lives Woo! hallelujah so when the ark of the covenant was captured we know the story David wanted the Ark of the Covenant back home in Jerusalem. Now, God forbade him to build the temple, but there was the tabernacle. And the Ark of the Covenant was to be brought back. You know, when David would make reference, I believe, and it'd be all due to the fact that David's, he coveted the idea of getting that which signified God's glory and his presence back to Israel, back to Jerusalem. That when he made reference to the temple, he was, or he tended to be more focused upon what the Ark of the Covenant represented. Hallelujah. And so I want to put emphasis on that, if you don't mind, for just a short while, a short bit. When we look... And to the word of the Lord, we find that there are other passages that make reference to the house, the temple, the tabernacle. Even in Psalms chapter 5 and verse 7, we see to where that he says, As for me, I will come into the house in the multitude of thy mercy. And let's say his mercy. You know, there's a fine line between Judgment and mercy. How can you say that, Pastor? Let's just go as far back to that of Adam and Eve. What God forbade them to do was to eat of what? The tree of knowledge of both good and evil. And he did precisely tell them that the day that you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. So the essence of that meaning as we see in subsequent scriptural readings, the soul that sinneth shall surely die. But there was no immediate judgment that came upon them other than that they were in God's fury driven from out of the garden. But with that judgment, there came the mercy of God. There came a word of hope, and that word of hope was, Thy seed shall wound the head of the serpent. The heel of thy seed shall wound the head of the serpent. It was making reference to, amen, a messianic promise. It was making reference to the coming of a Lord, amen, that would baptize them with deliverance. You know, we find a way even. Cain, who slew Abel, God spoke to Cain in a manner for which that mercy was being offered and expressed. 
letting him to know if thou would only do good, you know, you'll be all right. You'll be okay. But he neglected and failed on his part to pursue that for which God would instruct him to do. And despite of what happened, having committed this hideous crime and taking the life of his own brother, it was Cain, his blood, that cried out for vengeance. We see to where that, I mean, it was Abel, his blood, that cried out for vengeance. It, we see, however, that Cain was marked. And when marked, God would spare him. He would become a fugitive, but to God be the glory. So you could see that there's a fine line between that of judgment and mercy. Judgment and mercy. And when David saw the Ark of the Covenant, above all and everything else that would be displayed, that which would be exhibited within the Ark was the mercy seat. It was a place to where blood was to be sprinkled. To where the golden cherubims would have their sights fixed upon. And that blood signified something. It signified mercy. Right. Hallelujah. But it also signified judgment. Because some, the sins of Israel were judged. In so much that it would require the life of one in their stead. But because of the life of that one that was offered and given, mercy, amen, was shed abroad in and throughout the entire Israel. So when David went into the presence of the Lord, he saw judgment and he saw mercy. There were times for which David suffered at the hand of judgment. You hear me? And after having suffered at the hand of judgment, even God still was merciful enough to, to let him know, you're the man that's guilty for having shed innocent blood so that his blood would be spared. And then we see to where that David in and throughout the course of his life was forevermore pursuing and pursuing mercy. It seemed because God showed him mercy and when he saw the ark of the covenant <laughs> he saw a blood covering when he saw the ark of the covenant he saw a mercy seat when he saw the ark of the covenant uh, he knew that God's presence was real in so much that where that he would be reminded of his delivered past. Uh, he was delivered uh, from that of which God, could, he had a rightful place uh, to cast his judgment upon him and so much as take his life uh, because uh, of the crime and the criminal incriminating acts that he performed uh, in and throughout his, honey, I'm going to tell you, if there's anything that you and I deserve rightfully tonight, it would be the judgments of God. Uh, but when I come to the house of God, when I come to a place of worship, when I come, amen, and I see uplifted hands, I see uplifted hands of a people that says, thank God, I am listed, I am labeled among the redeemed of the Lord, amen. I have received a blood covering upon my life, and the reason being is because, amen, we have found forgiveness of sins in that precious blood of the Lamb. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm getting ahead of myself. It feels good. So, the mishandling of the Ark of the Covenant cost the lives of Philistines, cost the life of Uzzah, blessed the lives of others. So you can see and witness both the curse and the blessings of God being poured out and bestowed upon humanity. I don't know how you see God's grace, but I still see his grace as amazing. <laughs> amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Hallelujah. But pastor, you weren't addicted to drugs. Pastor, you weren't involved in a life of whoredom. Pastor, you weren't, amen, bound by alcoholism. Yes, but I was bound by that of other things. Amen, if you only knew. <laughs> if you only knew. 
There are just some things that I know about you because you were willing to share them with me. But this one thing that I am grateful for, God spared me of it all. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. But I was still a sinner. I was born into sin and I was shaping in iniquity. Amen. And after I was born a few days, my life began to be filled with trouble. But in the midst of troubled times, in the midst of, amen, of perplexity, God has always been my profound deliverer. Every day that I live, my, 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 amen. He's been there. That's the reason why I come to church. It's because I want to share with others, amen, the testimony of what great things God has done for me and what he's doing for me today. Hallelujah. 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 God's good all the time. Amen. You see, the, what was there in the worship of God's house that made it thus indispensable to David? The sense of human fellowship and the deepest yearnings of his heart. He felt in the sanctuary that he was not alone. He craved for fellowship. Let me tell you why I crave for fellowship. Because I know I'm not alone in this fight, Sister Tina. I'm not engaged in spiritual warfare by myself. I've got some elder sisters and saints of this church family and body that comes to me from time to time. Sister Connie just informed me moments ago. He, she said, I haven't bugged you here of late, have I? <laughs> you know, occasionally I, I like for her to bug me. But my heart takes great pleasure in knowing that I've got elders out there. And when they tell me, Pastor, I've really been praying for you here of late. <laughs> And you want me to forsake the assembling of myself in and among the elders who would leave me with a word of encouragement, say, Pastor, I've been praying for you here of late. Honey, those words I need in my life, it lets me to know that I'm not engaged in spiritual warfare all alone, but they're battling right there beside me, right along with me. Honey, you better thank God you've got someone to worship the Lord with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, he, didn't, he didn't want to be feel like he was all alone. And he wasn't. He craved for fellowship as we all should do. And for him it was very difficult to find. He had to deny himself those pleasant intimacies that are so heartening to the common man. You know, it's so easy for us to find ourselves involved in other areas of life. Our culture is adapted to the idea that pleasure and human pleasure t should take priority above God. In fact, we see to where that even the Word of God declares that through that of the Apostle Paul as he addresses Timothy that in the last days, Men shall be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. I'm going to tell you, lovers of God involves our love one to another. For by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. How do they know that we have love one to another if we should so much as forsake the assembling us of ourselves together? Mm. We need each other. Amen. So he was no longer solitary. There he was, a subject, just as all others were. You know, for me to preach things any different, other than the need for you and I to have true God-given heartfelt conviction and sorrow, would relegate God to a level in human reasoning that God cannot deliver you from. I don't want people to come to church and just feel comfortable. The only real comfortable source is none other than the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Because 
It's his spirit it's, and his spirit alone that is more capable of giving to you and I the amount of consolation that we truly need. It's not the pleasures of life. My, my. I don't want to relegate God to a level that so many have, Brother Long, when God has delivered others from nicotine and mislead them into believing that God can't deliver one from nicotine today. I don't want to relegate God to a level within another man's eyes and, and in his way or her way of thinking within the realm of human reasoning. God said, come, let us reason together. But it's not to reason with him on our terms. It's to reason with him on his terms. He said, well, pastor, what if I don't experience deliverance? I, you know, I, I, I'm not, I like to be a bit more positive in the sense to where that God's word teaches me that he is no respecter of persons. What he'll do for one, he'll yet do for another. If he's healed one of cancer, he can heal another of cancer. If he's delivered one from alcoholism, he can deliver another from alcoholism. If he's delivered one from hard drug addiction, he can deliver another one from hard drug addiction. If he's delivered one from pornography, he can deliver another one from pornography. If he can deliver one from homosexuality, he can deliver another one from homosexuality. I'm just going to call it for what it is here tonight. Amen. I want to create an atmosphere for that when people come to church, even on live stream, that they see and realize, amen, the God that I serve is only limited and confined to one's way of thinking. But I don't want to put him in a box. Amen. I don't want to cradle him with the, in the, my arms. Amen. I want to be cradled in his arms. My, my, my. So as with David, so it should be with us in all the deepest regions of our being. It is the assurance of a real fellowship in the marketplace. Men meet and mingle on the basis of common interest in business. Hallelujah. In the home, lives are united by all the tender ties of human love, but in the sanctuary, the ground of fellowship is the common need for our immortal spirit, which knows its weaknesses and its need of pardon and cannot be satisfied with less and less than God. I need God. And there are times for which, uh, amen, I am reminded by a brother and I'm reminded by that of another sister. Preacher, you're still in need of God. I'm still in need of your prayers. I, I covet your prayers earnestly. And there are times for which uh, I won't and through by the laying on of your individual hands uh, am looking for my spirit to be lifted above the shadows of despair and despondency. Honey, I believe in the prayers of the saints. I'm not even halfway through, but I'm going to have to sew this up pretty quick. The one thing that our gathering can do for us in a way that nothing else can ever do as we fight our battles and as we fall and rise again and wrestle heavenward against storm and tide, it tells us there are others in the valley with us. Amen. I'm glad I don't walk the valley alone. Oh, yes. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. They do. Sometimes a brother is my rod. Sometimes a sister is my staff. Hello. And they bring what source of comfort is needed to let me to know that I'm to redirect myself into a path that will lead me from out of the valley of temptation. Good stuff. And so we are to develop a sense of camaraderie and common prayer. We voice a common need 
and in common praise a common aspiration and within the house of God we come to feel that we are not alone <laughs> and to feel that it is like a strain of music without that fellowship we should despair for the pathway is infinitely hard without that fellowship knowing our instability we might falter and fall by the wayside and then there falls on us the benediction of worship and we are wakened or awakened to the sense of brotherhood thank God there's going to be amen a Joshua thank God there's going to be yet another that will lift up the arms of ministry in the, <laughs> oh yes lift up the arms of ministry when it seems as if others are failing to perform what spiritual conquest it needed. Uh, honey, we need our arms lifted from time to time. And there falls upon us the benediction to worship. Others have known the things that we have known. The failures and the struggles for which we oftentimes have yearned. Others as vile as we have been redeemed and became more than conquerors in Christ. Others too have been tempted to despair and yet have known that to depart from God was the avenue to death. My brother, it is such things that we learn in public worship. It is such things that you and I learn within this place that is oftentimes referred to as the house of God. I know the true temple be none other than this flesh, the true tabernacle. I don't have time to really expound upon all of that. I just want to put emphasis upon the reality that there is a great deal to be absorbed from a spiritual standpoint when we're together. Yes. When we're together. No lonely metal, no still and shadow woods, no lonely mountainside can teach us what the house of God or our gathering is capable of teaching us. Amen. 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 Saying with the king of Israel, as for me, I shall come into thy house. Within the house of God was for David the message of the past. It was the memorial of all that God had been in the life of David as well as within the lives of all of us. There were seasons when he was hard-pressed, seasons when the sky was dark and lowering and all the sunshine seemed and seemed to have departed. There stood the ark that had been born through the wanderings of the wilderness. There was the mercy seat. <laughs> Oh, there was the mercy seat where God had dwelt under the sheltering wings of the golden cherubim. <laughs> there was the pot of manna <laughs> from the desert that had fed the hungry only to remind David, Amen. I once was young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor its seed begging bread. Reminding him that God will forevermore give and give to man that daily provision that is necessary to help sustain him from day to day. Hence Jesus' reasons for letting us to know that when we pray, we ought to pray in this manner. Give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. Oh, what a reminder. I take joy pleasure in the hearing the testimony of one who may not be as well off as I am, who may be struggling from paycheck to paycheck. And when God speaks to them to give so much within the offering plate, only to find their purses filled with either tantamount to the amount paid in offering or beyond the following week because God saw to it that they would be blessed despite their sacrificial offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a great deal of joy to hear and hear of such testimonies that are offered to where God would provide for them the daily substance that they are in need of to help sustain them. Praise God. David went to revive his courage by the past. 
And so when he looked and looked at the budding rod of Aaron, he would then be reminded and reminded of the rebellion of such leaders of tribes that would attempt to, to take the place of the leader in which God had ordained and orchestrated to lead the household of Israel in earthly ministry or in priesthood. And that budding rod would only remind David, I have put you and I have exalted you to a place and to a position of leadership for this cause, and that is to lead my people. Hallelujah. And so I don't want to be of a mind to believe that when God puts me into a place as a shepherd, that I'm to serve as Lord over God's heritage, but that I would only be one on to direct you and direct you to a place to where you feel his presence and you witness and see what the Ark of the Covenant represents and signifies. And then the testimony and then the witness, those table stones, those tablets of the law to remind David I have brought order to the household of Israel. To remind David that those laws were written by the finger of God. To remind David, I believe that as the laws were written upon those tablets, that the promise, prophetic word of God will soon come to pass to where that they'll no longer be written upon table stones or upon stone in general, but that we're written upon the hearts of humanity. My God. Uh, Amen. And so when we come to the house of God, what I see, amen, is the law of God bringing order to the lives of humanity, witnessing the power of God's word at work in their lives. Mm. I'm telling you, there's nothing like the power of God's word that is as capable of bringing structure to one's life because his word, his spirit, and combining that with the spirit, his word, therefore, is made alive in us. That's why I come to the house. That's why I come to a place of worship. That's why I come to a place of gathering. Oh, you can feel God by yourself. There's absolutely no question, no doubt about it. But I do read somewhere within the scripture to where Jesus said that where two or three are gathered together in my name, agreeing upon any one thing, there will I be <laughs> in the midst of them. My, my, my. Oh, yes, two or three together. Yeah, there are going to be small gatherings and there'll be great gatherings. Uh, but despite of how small and how great these gatherings are, they're still gatherings uh, for a purpose. There's a lot of people who want to put a great deal of emphasis upon our need in going to house to house. Yes, the apostles and others of the disciples did go from house to house in breaking bread in prayer and notice in fellowship. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, but they were involved in fellowship, in fellowship. Brother Broadway used to have a saying that went like this. You know what fellowship is? Fellowship is this. It's when all us fellows are in the same ship together honey let's get in the same ship together and let's have church Amen. let's all stand to our feet well good word I would to God that it were feasible for a lot of our people that travel such a distance to be at church every service. So for the ones that are interested in whether we're going to return to Sunday morning and Sunday night services, I come with an announcement. After this Sunday, beginning the first Sunday of June, we'll have services as usual. Amen. Sunday morning, Sunday night services. Amen.
<laughs> and that would give to all that travel some distance an opportunity to stay after church, linger long enough so that they can be here for Sunday night service. You know what I liked in, in terms of President Trump this past week? I know that he's not a perfect individual. But he did say that these places of worship were essential. But along with that statement, he also said this. He said, we don't need less prayer. We need more prayer. We don't need less gathering. We need more gathering. And I'm not talking about gathering and gossiping, putting the two Gs together. I'm talking about gathering and gospeling, putting them two Gs together. Brother Jordan told me that Brother Outlaw used to have a saying. He said, some, some so-called saints, they have the preacher for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> if you can't figure that one out, I'll let, you, I'll let you linger on that thought for a little while. Sometimes the preacher just don't preach well enough. Sometimes he doesn't come and visit as frequent as you think he should. Sometimes he's not at church early enough, and when he's at church early, he's too early. If I had and was of a desire to do so, I could breathe down the backside of your collars and police you every day of your life. I certainly hope that you're not a people that want me to be doing that. But instead, when I can't sleep at 2.30 in the morning, you have a preacher that will find himself an altar somewhere and commence to pray and, and pray for an hour or two and eventually pray himself to sleep if need be. That's what I hope you want in a preacher. Doesn't it feel good to come to church? Yeah. Why don't we just lift our hands and magnify the Lord together, shall we? Why don't we glorify his name right now? Let's give God some heartfelt thanks. Uh, come on, let's give to him a true heartfelt expression of gratitude. Uh, amen. Let it be like a well from within. Uh, amen. Flowing over with true joy, with great victory. Come on, let there be an aspiration to express oneself. Amen. In a true realm of liberty, spiritual liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> mm. And when you come to church, Brother Juan, don't try to pinpoint the fault of a preacher. Even when he's still staring in the camera, while well, it's time to pray. We had Spanish service on, on last night at Cameron, or a, a devotional. And Brother Juan, <laughs> it's funny though, really. Uh, pardon me. He, he says in Spanish, we're going to pray. Well, I'm just staring at the camera. He's dealt his head down. He started praying. He finally looks over at me. He says, we're praying, Pastor. <laughs> we ought not come to church to try to find fault with one another, but instead look for the blood covering. 
Instead, look for the exercising of God's mercy and grace upon another one's life. Instead, amen, see the love of God at work to, to the capacity of which some life, uh, amen, within a short period of time begins to be changed uh, and changed, uh, amen, from the creature that they once were, amen, into a new creature. Honey, you and I are new creatures in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. And new every day that I live. We're all a part of God's body. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. picture for which I have vividly had drawn I believe by the Holy Ghost just moments ago when we forsake the assembly we quite well fall into the same category as the disciples did when they came to arrest Christ and one by one they left Christ alone and the only one that followed, followed from a distance. A true soldier don't leave a fellow soldier in the battlefield to fight alone. But they fight side by side. And we don't leave one that's been wounded and stranded as if that there is absolutely no way that they can be given some form of spiritual life support and be rescued. Jesus felt forsaken by all. And it's no wonder that he could stand and say, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. And he said, I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you, but go with you even unto the end. Aren't you glad? Let's not forsake one another. Let's be of a strength to each other in Jesus' name.
I love you. Thank you for being present tonight and assembling yourself this cause. It's been enough disassembling already. In my opinion, President Trump preached the truth last week when he said, it's a sensual. And he, he didn't even know he was preaching. It's essential. Friends and family this Sunday start at 1030. And we're also doing a little surprise party for Emma. She turned 16 in the quarantine and they had wanted to throw a party for her. So we're going to do a, a, a small something on Sunday. And her. I might add thank you to all of you that, that did reach out to her during her birthday during the time of quarantine. Uh, uh, we are having Spanish service too as well this coming Sunday at 2 o'clock. So we, we, we're going to ask all of you that are still fellowshipping out here once services begins here, if you either come to service, we're not going to congregate and assemble in here, you know, just for the sake of fellowship and having a good time. There's going to be church service going on then, okay? God bless you. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. Greet each other is my prayer. You're dismissed from this place, but not from his presence.